In our last episode, we finished five months of grueling engine work and finally get to leave the slip again. Are you excited? So excited! Yeah! Goodbye, Marina! We headed out the marina channel and pointed our bow towards our favorite anchorage on the bay, Clipper Cove. Right before we untied our dock lines to head out for a couple days, our neighbor surprised us with a freshly caught salmon. What a treat! Celebratory dinner on SV Gemini tonight. Our next couple of days were full of lounging, drinking mimosas, and celebrating that we were back out on the water. But that wasn't all we were celebrating. We were also gearing up for a spectacular 25th birthday week. I also finally got to try out my new birthday gift from Jack, a tower stand-up paddleboard. Is that what you wanted? And she's off to go capture the world's most mesmerizing pictures of a boat at Acre. Just so happens that my birthday falls on the 4th of July, so we had plans for a big raft up and party with friends and family. It was such a blast we forgot to get the video camera out. to be back in Clipper Cove. It feels so great to be back out on the hook. Our engine is running great so far, so we're feeling really good about everything. And check out this view. What? Pretty awesome. Jack's hoisting. Why do I keep say, saying hoisting the anchor? It's hoisting the anchor, I don't know. Jack's raising the anchor, and we're gonna head home to pick up our friends and go sailing. We had a couple of days of spectacular sailing on the bay. Little did we know what was yet to come. We think our heat exchanger is cracked and leaking fluids into our dry exhaust system. Oh, boat life. <laughs> We're trying to be really positive about it, but if it's not, if it's not one thing, it's always another because we finally felt like our boat was put back together and running and we got to enjoy her for about a week or two. Yeah, about 12 engine hours and now we've got another potentially very serious what? issue. Once we, once we parked our boat, we smelled some sootiness down in the galley and we open up our engine compartment and our exhaust elbow has cracked and broken into two complete pieces right there and it was just spewing out exhaust but it was also spewing out water which shouldn't be happening this is a, a raw water to the heat exchanger element 
and this is raw water that comes up here and goes into the exhaust. I think we have an exhaust leak in this manifold somewhere. Once again, our engine was torn apart and we took the heat exchanger to get checked out at a shop. Yep. But yeah, this whole bottom would have to get cut out. Yep. And nope. this would have to get all cut out. And then it's also, you know, then where these are, if it's anywhere around there, you yep. got to get around it to repair them. Yep. And it's worth a shot, right? No, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. You never... <laughs> get lucky sometimes. It all depends on the mix when they're shoveling. The... Right. The mix when they make the old yep. cast. Yeah. Um, I was hoping it was somewhere where I could see it. See it, yeah. But you too. can't. I know, yeah. So you would literally have to open the box. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What you doing there? Uh, I'm just getting ready to put some primer on our new heat exchanger. We had to modify our uh, exhaust riser because it cracked, and I'm pretty sure it cracked because of the uh, rigidity in the whole system. It was too, uh, it didn't have enough flexible hose on one side. The Vetus muffler anti lock was too strapped down. Uh, it's also really heavy and, you know, just hard to brace. So this is what we have. We took out all of this extra pipe after the water injection, cut down the whole assembly by that much, and then also this guy, it was that long. So it just had a lot of, a lot of potential play and too heavy and long and gangly. So we wanted to keep that, but shorten it a little bit. And then our exhaust hose will go right there. And then we'll have some nice flexibility from here to say there for the, for the Vetus hose. We have a tab here to put our bracing on that I'll try to go as, as close to 90 as I can to the motor. When you want to brace these things, you want it to be attached to the engine not to the bulkhead or anything like that because the motor has a lot of uh, port to starboard vibration when it's running. Um, and then this whole rise wants to be 12 inches above the water line, which is hard to do with our boat. We made a sturdy brace system with some flat bar and put it all back together to hopefully fire up the engine once again. Alright, what do you think? Are we ready to start her up? Let's go. Let's what do you think, Ralph? Yeah! Go on, game! And then, this happened. So, our boat just almost caught on fire. We went to start uh. the engine up. Gross. We went to start the engine up after working on it for a while and there was a wire for the engine counter that counts the hours used on the engine and those two wires were touching by accident and they arced out and actually like just burnt themselves out. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Fuck, what was that? What is going on? Like we could see this crazy orange streak through through the engine bay. So just more work for us to do. Okay. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds like a perfect job for Mullet Larry! Yes, the rumors are true. Jack rocked a mullet for a couple of days during this project. Mullet Larry, how do you feel right now? Mullet Larry, well... No, I'm just pissed at this project. It's taking way too long. Since January, we just can't catch a break. Nothing ever works. It's always something else. But the exhaust riser is braced like heck, so. Fix that problem. Fix that one. Now it's on to the other one that I just created. 
but it's okay. I'm gonna sit down and do some editing and eat some food and get a buzz on and start over tomorrow. Back at it in the morning. <clears throat> Replacing all of our engine wiring harness that we just replaced. So you can see how lucky we got. Here, let me take my light off. You see that? After rewiring everything that had burnt up, we still had terrible smoke. It had to be the fuel injectors. Diesels are really specific to their fuel. Um, damn it, I hope this is the last part. But let me pull these injectors out and I'll show you how they look. And then I'll take them to the shop and maybe we can see a difference. I don't know. Uh, they're going to spray test them so they can see like if it's a decent burn. So we'll see. I don't know. Meanwhile, we decided to open up our fuel tanks and take a look inside. We found nasty, sludgy, grimy goop in the bottom of our port fuel tank. Ew! That's what I took out of That's... the bottom of the tank. That looks like poop. <laughs> With cleaned fuel tanks and replaced injectors, Stinky Pete was finally running like a dream. I'm still nervous about the motor, but that hasn't given us any trouble, so... Yeah. Well, that's the end of that major project. On to the next! Stay tuned for our next video. If you like our videos, help keep this boat afloat. Subscribe and join our Patreon crew today.